Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. So far we have understood about floor planning and placement stage related concepts and we also started understanding about the CTS part. And if you are visiting this video directly, then we recommend you to go through the series once it will help you really a lot. And in this video, we will start learning about the clock tree synthesis and its challenges. In previous video, we had a brush up of introduction to CTS in which we briefly saw that in pre-CTS stage, that is in placement stage, how the CTS will look like and that will look like something like this. And then we also discussed that after the CTS is done and the clock tree is synthesized, then it will look something like this where it is buffered and structured. Previously, we have briefly discussed that we do the clock tree synthesis for clock skew balancing and then we have to minimize the clock latency and we have to balance the loads across different clocks and we have to reduce the power consumption and we have to reduce the crosstalk and we have to reduce electromagnation. These are the challenges that we face and we have to do this otherwise we might run into issues later on and this is why we do the clock tree synthesis first. So let us start discussing one by one about each topic in detail. Let us understand the concept of skew balancing first. So if this is our timing path this kind of example we have seen or already earlier so in this timing path if you see we take the clock source here and what we say is it will take some time from here to here to reach so we take let us say the clock latency that is the clock taking the time to reach the clock pin of ff1 let's say it is t1 so that is your t1 is your clock latency so let's write it down like this clock latency clock latency is t1 in one case so that is clock latency of ff1 then comes the next clock latency for ff2 so that would be the time taken by the clock to reach from this clock source to the clock pin of ff2 and that would be clock latency of ff2 so clock latency of ff2 let us assume that value to be in variables it is t2 so how do we say the clock skew? So local clock skew. Local clock skew means it will be clock skew between two clocks, two clock latencies of adjacent or in a single timing path. That would be T2 minus T1. That is the local clock latency. Now let us say that some other clock latency is also there with respect to let's say this is FF3. So if that is T3, the time taken by the clock to reach from here to here it is t3 and let's say it is not related or maybe some other flip-flop is there for which tn is the clock latency and that is the maximum latency let us say this value this maximum latency so if this is the maximum latency in your entire design and this is your minimum latency in your entire design t1 then in that case you can have one global skew also so in your timing reports, if you see, you can find out that there is a global skew also mentioned. That would be Tn minus T1 because it is taking unrelated timing path. It might be related, might not be related. It is possible. That would be difference between this Tn minus T1. So this is your global, global clock skew and this is your local clock skew. In reality, the timing path will not look like this and the flip-flop arrangement or the clock path arrangement will not be like this. This is just a logical representation. In pre-CTS stage, when the flip-flops are already placed properly, at that time, your design will look actually like this. So it, there would be possibility that when flip-flops are placed, there is a single clock source and clock will be going logically to the all the clock pins of the flip-flop. So why logically? Because this is not the CTS done yet. And after CTS is done, in that case, your clock source will be properly synthesized. And in that case, you can see that buffering is also done. In this case, if you see, you have uh, improper latency. If you see, let's say if your clock source was here, then you can see that it is very nearer to the clock source. But other one is very far and that actually does not happen. So it will look something like this where each flip-flop will have balanced latency. Let us take an example to understand the concept of skew balancing. So in your pre-CTS design, let us assume that all the flip-flops are already placed like this and you have to now do the CTS of it. And let us assume that somewhere here you have your clock port. So if clock port is at a non-uniform position, it is not equidistant from all the clock sync pins. 
and in that case how do we draw the clock tree synthesis how do we do the clock tree balancing is the tool will take a median value so it will try to adjust the clock such that it should equally distribute everywhere for that what will it do it will take some point let's say it will do something like this so what will happen is it has reached a point which is almost equidistant from these two positions and now it knows that everywhere else also it will be re remaining similar and then from there it will draw a trunk like this so this is your trunk this is your trunk and from this trunk it has to distribute the clock to all the pins so that is your clock distribution and it will happen such that you will have all the clocks reaching equally everywhere like this so if you see you have now built a clock tree where almost everywhere in each of the clock pins you have the latencies almost similar so if time taken by the clock to reach at this point is t1 the t2 minus t1 will be very 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 less so in that case you can say that you have almost similar latency everywhere almost similar latency and when you have almost similar latency the in that case q will not be very high it will be less or within the range or acceptable limit so you should have your skew in the acceptable limit there are many ways of building the clock tree for balancing the skew the most commonly used clock tree structure for balancing the skew is h tree so let us consider an example where we have some cluster of cells in the design and we want to build the clock tree for this kind of design and we have to balance the skew in that case we use h tree most commonly so what will happen is your clock will be coming from somewhere here let's say clock port is in the downward side here so from here your clock trunk will be built like this and this is your most common median point from where most of the cells of all clusters are equidistant till there you will have your clock trunk and from there onwards you will see that it will divide like this and then the clock tree distribution to all the clock structures will be happening and you can see that it is mostly looking like an h that is why it is called as h tree clock structure our motto is to make the studies more interesting as we have said earlier too that it is not easy for everyone to take the studies seriously because it is boring most of the time with that said let's stop this video for now and we will come up with more concepts in further videos till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and give your important feedback in the comment section thank you